Why did you order Tea Party cases to undergo a multi-tier review? On the advice of my counsel, I respectfully exercise my Fifth Amendment right and decline to answer that question. Ms. Lerner, do you believe that there is not a smidgen of corruption in the IRS targeting of conservatives? On the advice of my counsel, I respectfully <coughs> exercise my Fifth Amendment right and decline to answer that question. I'm waiting for the YouTube beat mix version of that. Now, Lois Lerner, the former IRS official at the center of the agencies targeting the Tea Party scandal, was called before Congress again today. And you just saw it wasn't really interested in talking. Lerner decided to plead the fifth yet again, like she did back in May of 2013. So it does look like we're going to really find out what this woman really knows and how far up the ladder the scandal goes. Now, Daryl Issa, the chairman of the committee holding the hearing, threatened to hold Lerner in contempt, but that tactic's been used before and it didn't exactly work the last time. Now, House Republicans do think They've established a motive. Lerner and her colleagues were concerned over the Supreme Court's Citizens United ruling, which uncapped corporate political donations, like the unions, and decided to try to limit its impact starting back in 2010. There are actually emails that show Lerner and other IRS employees expressing their, you know, concern, and then deciding to monitor nonprofit groups more closely. But if we're being honest with ourselves, a smoking gun has yet to be uncovered. Here to talk about all of this is Jordan Seculo, the executive director of the American Center for Law and Justice. Um, you know, she just sat there and said the same old thing. I mean, we could have just played a sample clip over and over again. It would have made a difference. Yeah, the only thing she didn't do this time, Andrew, was assert her innocence or say that she hadn't done anything wrong or broken any rules. That would then lead to the, you know, the contempt. But, you know, it was interesting. The attorney really played this one uh, by having... Uh, on Sunday, there were obviously, we know in these emails, we've all seen it now, uh, it's a continuing part of this uh, scandal has been the email releases, that Chairman Issa goes on Fox News, says there's going to be, uh, uh, Lois Lerner is going to testify, but then uh, immediately after his appearance, the media starts reporting uh, that, that her attorney uh, has said that he was absolutely wrong by making that. Then we find out later, emails did indicate that she was willing to testify to some extent, and something happened within this 24, 48-hour period period where she told totally pull back even the options of trying to do this behind closed doors or some kind of uh, limited discussion to specific questions. But there was obviously a play here by her attorney where uh, she uh, opened up the door which then opened up the comments by uh, the chairman of the of the committee uh, and then tried to make it look like he was just uh, uh, blowing smoke, basically, which, in fact, we know was not the case because of the emails. And that somebody or someone decided, you know what, we don't want Lois Lerner to explain. And this would have probably been if she would have talked uh, and answered the kind of questions we heard Chairman Issa ask today, a few of the samples, we probably could have almost uh, closed the book on this investigation uh, from the congressional standpoint. All right. What about this uh, death threat thing. I saw it in a bunch of conservative blogs, a bunch of conservative uh, dot coms, including uh, I saw it in not so conservative places like USA Today and Politico, but that was really about it. Her lawyer is saying she's receiving death threats. Okay. Did you report this to the police? Where's the FBI? Is Eric Holder opening an investigation? Yeah. Who is threatening this woman's life? Because I, I can't imagine it's anyone from the Tea Party. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, Andrew, that was something I noticed right away in her attorney's first statement last week. This is before the exchanges that we've now come to know. But what we saw are his public statement. He said, one, she would be willing to testify if given full immunity. So no problem there. But if not, it's dangerous for her to come because she's received these threats. So it was OK for her to be there if she didn't have to face any potential criminal liability for what she says or if she committed perjury by her past statements, which is likely at least the basic level of why she doesn't want to talk because she blames Cincinnati and though her emails show that's not the case opening up your mouth and talking about that. That's, it's not a, a real uh, legal uh, question about should she be asserting her fifth if you were her attorney uh, and, and advising her to do that, or did she waive it, though, with that comment? That could come up with the contempt. But, but this issue of threat, again, it, it's as if they're trying to make this committee look like, and I think you saw also the uh, ranking Democrat, Elijah Cummings, uh, do that as well today, try to make it look like it's some Republican witch hunt, 
and they put Lois Lerner's life in jeopardy today, uh, which, by the way, they were open to a closed hearing if she was willing to communicate. Uh, they were open to doing this out of the public eye if, if security was a concern. Uh, but then you saw... Uh, at this hearing, it was, a, it was really a continuation of, of a previous hearing. That's why there was no opening long statement. It was really just, let's get right to the questions. But you saw the, the House Democrats try to turn this into a partisan issue again, Republican versus Democrats, so that people forget uh, that this is an issue that everyone expressed outrage about. And ultimately, you know, it doesn't look like we're going to get answers from Lois Lerner, so we'll have to rely on cases like ours, civil cases, uh, because the criminal investigation also is, is not really going anywhere. Well, what about this uh, off-the-record statement she, she offered to make or her lawyer offered up? I mean, wouldn't that point the investigation in the right way? I mean, if she said, look, you know, I'm not going to give you exact uh, details, but 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue is where you might want to start looking. Like, can she get off and, and get out if she gives them a piece of, of information that would set them in the right direction? So you get to make, uh, and it's issue, we haven't heard a lot about this, but as an attorney, uh, she first asked for basically the statements from her attorney last week, the public statement in response to her being recalled, was an ask for blanket immunity. That is extremely rare in a case like this. So to get immunity on anything you say and everything you've said in the past. So instead, you well, let me, let me jump in with this. Let me jump limited. in with this question. Would, would the big fish have to be you know, on the table. I mean, would she have to say, that's look, yeah, I, you know, have to you, proffer. You, that's the word proffer, right? But she would have to, the word is proffer. She would have to, she would have to elude in some way that what she has is in fact worth full immunity, right? Or, or some kind of immunity, even immunity to answering those questions. Uh, and, and there was no indication that that proffer, it's called a proffer, the attorney makes it, says, this is what Mrs. Lerner would be willing to testify about. This is information that may shed light on the kind of questions you've had. Here it is. So it's limited to, in scope. So she's not just going to sit before a committee and take whatever questions may come uh, because it's not a full immunity grant, but you can ask and she can offer information on this, this, and this if you give her immunity. No indication that was made at this point yet, uh, uh, Andrew. So the question is, does that happen? Or, you know, I'm picking up on the contempt. Uh, you heard that from Speaker Boehner. You heard that idea coming out of Chairman Issa. Uh, the idea is how do they wrap up this investigation? Are there more people to interview? I still want to hold out hope that there could be an immunity deal made because we all know Lois Lerner may not be the top of this problem, but as you said, without her testimony, you're not going to get a smoking gun right now. And law, in legal cases like ours, uh, we're still in a motion stage. So, you know, those can take years, uh, but certainly much longer than a congressional investigation. And uh, you're not going to see a lot, it doesn't look like, out of this cr uh, supposed criminal investigation either. Well, you don't want to get her on some lame uh, contempt charge. It's like getting a serial killer for blowing a stop sign. You know, you, you want to get the big, you want to reel in the big fish here. You want to know who gave the order. If I'm going to make a movie reference, it's going to be like a few good men. Who gave the code red? That's what we want to know. We want Nathan Jessup. Right. Yeah, you know, the problem has been, Andrew, the game playing now, even with Lois Lerner's attorney, uh, I, I really do think that there is something more bizarre than people have picked up on so far with the fact that in writing, in communications with the committee, one of his emails says, okay, she'd be comfortable with that. We can move forward with some kind of, it would be closed-door closed, uh, closed door deposition, but that would become public then. It just wouldn't be on camera, on video camera, uh, and that would not be released necessarily, but we'd all find out what she was testifying to. And then yet, within 24 hours, Chairman Eisen makes a statement about it, and then they pull back. There is something there, again, which keeps leading people uh, to believe that th it's bigger than just Lois Lerner, because even when she was about willing to testify, uh, suddenly something happens, and that's all he said in his email was, we've had a change of thought now, hmm. uh, we're no longer willing to do that kind of testify. So it, it seemed like Lois Lerner was comfortable enough as an attorney and, and being advised by attorneys in testifying to some extent that she wasn't too concerned about uh, criminal, uh, uh, possibility of criminal uh, violation, that she could maybe point the finger, that she could lead this investigation in the right way, and yet they pulled back from that. And, and if she wanted limited immunity to maybe the early statements she made about who was responsible and blaming it on Cincinnati, I don't think there'd be any question. You give her the immunity on that, let's get to the bigger pictures we were talking about. But that's so far has not been made by Lois Lerner. It looked like she was ready to 
at least testify to some extent, and, and they, they pulled off. And that, to me, is very questionable yet again in this, in this investigation. It's very bizarre uh, what we just saw in the last few days between the committee and Lois Lerner's attorneys. Uh, I'm waiting for the moment where she says, you can't handle the truth. But All right, thanks for joining me tonight, Jordan.